Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to add, subtract, uh, multiply, and divide functions. And when we get into uh, dividing, we're also going to look into identifying the domain uh, of our function. So uh, <laughs> excuse me. Um, first example here, so whenever we're mm, had some food in my teeth, sorry. <clears throat> So whenever we're looking into adding uh, functions, basically what we're doing is we're adding um, the terms that we, you know what the functions are, are equal to. So if I want to find out what you know f plus g is going to be, and let me see something actually how they wrote it. Okay. Um, so basically, all I'm simply going to do is add what my two functions equal to. And there's a, the easiest way to really do that, especially when you're dealing with um, you know, uh, kind of expressions here is just to basically, or polynomial expressions, is just to add your like terms. So I can add these vertically. So basically, I'm going to take our two functions, and I'm going to align them with their like terms. So you can see here my variables are aligned, and here my numbers are aligned. And I'm basically just going to add them. So 4x plus x is going to be 5x. Negative 3 plus 2 is going to be a negative 1. So therefore, f plus g of x equals 5x minus 1. Actually, let me write this out. I don't know why I didn't put that before. OK, so if I was going to do subtraction, I'm going to do basically do the exact same thing. This is saying 5 minus g. So therefore, it's going to be 4x minus 3 minus x plus 2. Now, i using parentheses in this case just to remind me that I need to subtract each of these terms. So it's 4x minus x, which is going to be 3x. And then negative 3 minus 2. So if you owe me $3 and you borrow two more dollars, um, now that is going to be negative 5. So f minus g of x is equal to a 3x minus 5. Now, when we're looking into multiplication, uh, I need to multiply both these. And again, so I'm going to put them in parentheses. So 4x minus 3 times x plus 2. Now, when I put it in parentheses here, you can see I have a binomial times another binomial. So to multiply these, I could use FOIL, box method, so forth. So I'll just go ahead and use uh, kind of the FOIL face here. And there, 4x times x is 4x squared. Um, 4x times 2 is going to be a positive 8x. Negative 3 minus x is a negative 3x. Negative 3 times 2 is a negative 6. Combine my two middle terms, I have 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. So therefore, f of g of x equals 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. Okay. And then the last one is going to be division. Um, so if I was going to do f of g of x, I'm basically just going to divide one or the other over the other, um, x plus 2. Now, I can't divide the x plus 2. You remember, you have to be able to divide the whole denominator into. You just can't say, oh, the x's divide out or the 2 divides in. They're set ones are separated by uh, addition and subtraction. We can't uh, divide across addition or subtraction. So I'm just going to have to leave it like this. However, one of the things I wanted to talk about, though, was what would be the domain. Now remember, the domain is going to be all the values uh, that make up your function. And what we have discussed so far is only the values that cannot be a part of your function, which in this case, you could say that x our domain um, is going to be all real numbers where x cannot equal negative 2. Because if x was negative 2, then my denominator would be 0, and you can't have your denominator equal 0. Uh, to use that in notation formation, I would do negative infinity to negative 2 union negative 2 to infinity. Um, OK. Very good. And you know, you guys could obviously see the domain for all of these, the rest of these would all be all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity. All right, so now let's go and get on to uh, the next function, which is now going to be two quadratics. And again, ladies and gentlemen, the exact same thing. Um, when, I am, when I am adding or subtracting, I like to use the vertical method. Just align your like terms with each other, and then combine them. So here, I'm going to do negative x squared plus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to put the negative x squared in front. So therefore, then the bottom term is just going to be x squared plus 2x minus 15. Okay, And remember, we are adding these. So negative x squared plus uh, x squared is 0x squared, which is just 0. Uh, 2x, I don't have an x up here, so it's just going to be a positive 2x. 
and then 1 minus uh, 15 or 1 plus a negative 15 is a negative 14. So therefore, f plus g of x is equal to 2x minus 14. Remember, that went to 0. All right, so now let's go ahead and do subtraction, which we're going to do again the exact same thing. So I'm just going to relay, relay these, or negative x plus 1. Now instead of addition, it's going to be subtraction. And again, I'm going to use parentheses. I'm going to use parentheses to make sure that I remember, OK, you're going to subtract each one of these terms. You could also rewrite this as an addition problem, distribute the negative, and then rewrite an addition problem. Uh, I do that a lot. All right, so add vertically. So negative x minus uh, x squared. So if you owe me a dollar and you borrow another dollar, then you now owe me negative 2x squared. Uh, again, there's no 2x, but now I'm subtracting. So therefore, that's a negative 2x. Or there's no x up from here to subtract from. So it's basically like 0 minus 2x, which would be a negative 2x. And then 1 minus negative 15. Remember, minus a negative 15 will be a double negative. So that'd be positive. So that's going to be a positive 16. So f minus g of x would be a negative 2x squared minus 2x plus 16. OK, uh, to the multiplication, which is probably going to be the, ta uh, the longer version. Now, you can see here I use the distributive property. And you can use the distributive property, or FOIL again, to multiply a binomial times a trinomial. However, I will tell you, I do not really like using you know, this kind of method. I would prefer using the box method. And basically what the box method is going to do is it's, it's going to allow us to um, multiply these to kind of create a box so we can represent the area of our, or the product as an area. So the first one I have here is 1 minus x squared. Actually, you know what? Let's rewrite this in standard form. Let's rewrite it as negative x squared plus 1. So negative x squared plus 1. And then I'll put what else I'm multiplying by on the other side x squared plus 2x minus 15. So now, ladies and gentlemen, all we're simply going to be doing is uh, multiply e to find the area of each little box. And then we'll combine all of those to get our general area. So negative x squared times x squared is going to be now a negative x to the fourth. Negative x squared times 2x is going to be a negative 2x cubed. Negative x squared times negative 15 is going to be a positive 15x squared. x squared times 1 is just going to be x squared. 2x times 1 is just going to be a 2x. And 2x, or 1 times negative 15, is just going to be a negative 15. And you can see there's actually only one set of common terms here. And those are those two. Everything else is a x to a different power, as well as a constant, so we can't combine them. So my final answer, which is f of g, or f times g of x is going to equal a negative x to the fourth minus 2x cubed. x squared plus 15x squared is a positive 16x squared plus 2x minus 15. Whew. All right. Um, all right, now let's get into the last one. The last one is saying f of g, or f divided by g of x. So basically, and I'm like running out of space. Basically, all we have for that is f divided by g of x, all I'm simply going to do is write one function over the other function. Okay, But obviously, we want to see, you know, again, we want to look at, well, what is the domain? What are the values that our function cannot be? Um, so we look at this and we say, all right, you know, can we factor this? Can we factor x squared plus 2x minus 15? And I think I have this factored. So if we set it equal to 0, x squared plus 2x minus 15. If we set that equal to 0, um, if we set that equal to 0, and then we go and factor, and we can say, what, that would be 5x and negative 3x? Yes. Or 5 and negative 3. So that would be x plus 5 times x minus 3. OK? So therefore, um, x. So we could say it's all real numbers. However, if I solve for this, I would know that x cannot equal negative 5, and x could not equal positive 3. Or if I was going to use interval notation, that would be negative infinity to negative 5, union negative 5 to 3, 
union 3 to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you uh, determine the domain of a function, as well as write it in uh, as well as write it in interval notation, and add, subtract, multiply, and divide two functions. Thanks. Ah. <sighs>